Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and please don't tease me. Today we're going to be talking about how you can raise successful, happy kids in The Sims 4. So I'm specifically talking about Sims 4 children gameplay because I've seen lots of people talk about how The Sims children are boring and how lots of people skip the gameplay with them. I really like playing with children, but I didn't enjoy playing with them until I started playing with the Super Sim Challenge. So I'll put a link to that in the description. So I thought I would come in here and we could talk about how this life stage can be really fun and rewarding and it can lead you to having a way more rounded sim when they grow up which can make the game a lot more fun. So let's just get into it. I want to talk about parenthood, specifically the game pack. I'm going to be talking a lot about it in this video because my gameplay isn't generally intrinsically played with that pack. If you don't have it, I would recommend that you get it. I'm going to talk about features that come in this pack and I don't know which features come in the base game. So if you're not sure about where a particular feature comes from, it's probably from Parenthood. I'm also going to mention how to use a bunch of other systems, including the club system from Get to Work. So again, you will get the most out of this if you have all the packs. So let's start from Toddlerhood. I'm not going to go into what you need to do because I've already done that and I'll link that video. But in order to make sure that your kids have the best start in life, you should aim to have the happy toddler reward, though you should really aim for having the highest toddler reward that you can get. You can get the happy toddler reward by making sure that they've reached level 3 in imagination, thinking, communication, and movement. When your sim has at least happy toddler by reaching these milestones, they're going to age up with a couple of skill points in creativity, mental, social, and motor skill respectively. I'm not going to get into that here at all, but this is going to make the time you spend playing with your child exponentially easier. This is also going to help your child's grades, so let's talk about that a little. So I'm going to be talking about grades, but first we're going to set up your child for success. So as soon as your child ages up, once you're done picking their traits and their aspiration, you're going to go into their phone menu and find where it says join after school activity. You want to join scouts, and you want to do this the moment they age up, because every single thing that they do has a chance of being turned into a scout badge. Having a certain number of badges before your sim ages up to adult means that your sim will scale even faster, however you want to do it passively worse while your sim is a child. You will get more into this when your sim is a teenager, but make sure to do this immediately when your sim becomes a child in order to gain all those bonuses that it provides passively at first. The next step that you want to take is to buy them a journal with a distinctive pattern on it and stick it in their inventory. This is going to make your life a lot easier later, but you probably won't need it for now. Don't put it off until they're teens, as this can help a lot when they're a child. Before you can even think about your sim's grades, you need to think about what they need in order for you to raise them. Like any sim, your child needs a bed. However, if you have a single parent household or are short on money, your child can share a bed with your adult sim. If your child is sleeping in a double bed, they will not have nightmares and they will not wake up from being frightened by the monster under the bed, whether they're sleeping with an adult or not. To avoid the monster under the bed, when your child is sleeping in a single bed, you want to place the Kulala, the defender wall light, near their bed. The light is priced at 60 simoleons and you can make it smaller if you choose to, since it is pretty flashy. Your child will also need a desk or table with space to do their homework. I think with the most recent patch they can get on their knees, but I remember that if you try to get them to do their homework without any surfaces available, the game will just tell you that they can't do it. Outside of that, you don't actually need to buy them anything, but it's nice to have toys. The science kit, the doctor toy, the big stuffed animals, the activity table, and the dollhouse in particular. Some of these your sims should be able to play with when they're toddlers, so you can just change a few things without having to spend too much of your money. Okay, now that you have everything that you need, let's actually talk about your child's grades. When your child ages up, they always start school with a C. Your child needs to reach level 2 in any of the child skills before they're able to have a B, the next letter grade for those of you outside of the states. Now this is one of the big reasons why it's nice to have happy toddler, because you won't have to make any extra effort to get your child here. Your child's lately chores include doing their homework and scaling up. Homework is the most important component in getting better grades, so here's how you can make sure your sim takes advantage of that. Homework needs to be a family time thing, otherwise it will take your child sim approximately one and a half hours to finish the daily homework, which is honestly unsustainably long if you want your sim to do it every single day of their life when they are children. Having an adult sim help your child is going to cut the time by half, and the children will gain a focused moodlet. When your child has maxed out all of their childhood skills, they'll do homework by themselves eight times faster than they originally would have, so you can leave them alone then. In the meantime, make sure your sim's parents or guardians help with their homework. 
In addition to that, you should create a homework club. You can utilize the club system to create homework clubs where other children or a group of siblings get together in order to finish their homework. Make sure you buy the homework club perk and additionally buy the other child skill perks when you can. This is going to help your sim skill a little more quickly, but you will do so passively, which is another great perk, no pun intended, of a homework club. You can also use your club to do a take home projects, which are generally a lot better than school, and you want to get those. They are randomly generated and it's really tempting not to do them, but I'm here to tell you, you should do them and you should want to get them. You should do take home projects because they actually count as homework. You don't have to have your child sim sit down and do their homework if they have a take home project and that is all the better for you. Because unlike with homework, your sims actually scale up considerably when they're working on a project. Your sim will get a huge bump in their grades when they decide to do a project and you can have their siblings join them by clicking on assist with project after your sim starts working on it carefully. I don't know if it's the original sim who will have the boost in their grades, but they will certainly all get a boost in their skilling. Once you're done with a project, your sim can stick it into their inventory to donate for later, or they can play with it if you want to. They do get a little skill gain from it. Now you might be wondering why you should even care about your grades, they don't seem to affect anything, but I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. Your grades are going to become a lot more important when your sim is a teenager, but it is way easier to start them from the top. If your child ages up with an A, they'll be able to go to high school and start with a B. This is generally better because it means that you can get an A letter grade a lot quicker. Additionally, if you let your sim's grades drop to an F when they're a child, your sim can be taken away by the social worker. If your child's sim's grades are poor, you might also find that they get negative moodlets, like embarrassed moodlets, and you can have their parents be upset with them. If you have parenthood, this will greatly affect your child's responsibility character trait, which is huge, and I will speak about that in detail a little later. First, let me talk about vacation days. Each child aspiration that is fulfilled will give your child a huge 20% boost in the adult skills of the appropriate category. That is why it is in your best interest to complete all of them if you're able to. Now, even just completing a couple should be simple enough, provided that your sims have a routine. If you're playing on normal lifespan, you should take the last few days off before your child ages up in order to complete all aspirations. You can do this by clicking on take vacation days and taking as many vacation days as you can off. Just remember to go into the phone to do so. This should only be done after you've both completed the mental with aspiration of how your sim earn an A grade at school. I will talk about this a little bit more soon, but here is one thing you need to absolutely keep in mind. And that's that a routine is absolutely the key to success. You should always aim to send your kids to school with all their needs in green. However, there are notable exceptions to this which you need to pay attention to. Your sim won't recover energy while at school because they are learning, but if they are running late, they can catch breakfast at school. You can solve loneliness by clicking on the make friends option when they are away from home. Your sim can take care of their bladder need when they're away. In my experience, it is best to have your sim do the following routine. So let's talk about how you can structure your routine. Your child will come home from school at approximately 3 p.m. By that point, they will likely be hungry. If you have a large household, it is best to have a group meal ready for them. You want to aim for good quality meals because these can affect their moods when it comes to doing their work at home, and if it's poor, it's gonna make them uncomfortable. Once your sim is done eating, start your club gathering and have them start on their homework. Make sure an adult sim helps them out. This will ensure that they are free entirely by approximately 5 o'clock, even if you make them do their extra credit work. Your sim will likely be a little bored by then, so you should consider skilling them with objects that are fun or entertaining, like the violin, or if you're more interested in their motor skills, you can have them play on the jungle gym. If you want your sim to socialize while earning some motor skill, you can have them dance with other sims. By the time it's 7 o'clock, all of your sims needs except for energy should be in the green. If they aren't, this is a good time to address this. Have your sim take care of their hygiene, social, and bladder needs here, and your club gathering here. Don't do it before because your sim won't get all the boost to their skilling that you want them to. Your child should be in bed at approximately 10 o'clock. Your routine during the weekend should be structured around fulfilling all of your child's aspirations, but the easiest way to do this is by combining the aspirations with each other. Now let's talk about how you can structure your aspirations. Remember that you can change your sim's aspirations every single time that you want to. It is in your best interest to fulfill the first aspiration milestone in all of the aspirations as soon as your sim ages up to child, because they're pretty easy to do and it is much easier to switch around when you have the first few down. I'm going to walk you through a quick example here. 
So, on a Saturday in my Sims game, she needs to fulfill the first echelon of the mental, motor, and social aspiration. I'm going to have her take a bubble bath so that she becomes playful, and then I'm going to send her to the park. This will also give my sims at home some time to fulfill their own needs, which means I won't have to micromanage them. Now I only have to get two things done, but I have a feeling it'll be really easy. After having my sim play in the jungle gym, I'll use the many chess boards to fulfill the first echelon of the mental aspiration, which is to play three games of chess. Then I will have her introduce herself to four more sims, and that fulfills the first aspiration, which is to introduce herself to five sims. So now my baseline on both aspirations is the second echelon. Which is to say, don't be afraid of switching them around. Make sure to cater their activities around the way that it will be best for them to fulfill those aspirations. It will make your life a lot easier when they age up. Aspirations are intrinsically tied to skilling, and I'm going to talk to you on how to best do that. Now, child sims have four base skills, much like toddlers. Social is increased by having conversations with other sims primarily, but it can also be increased by chatting on the computer, playing with a dollhouse, and talking to one of the large stuffed animals. Getting to the top of the social skill will allow your sim child to unlock both the charisma and the mischief skill while they're still children. The mental skill is primarily gained through using chess and the science table. Once again, your sim can use the computer to play arithmetic games and doing science projects will help improve the skill considerably. If your sim gets to 10 in the mental skill, they will unlock logic, video games and fishing while they are children. Your sim will gain creativity by using the activity table, playing with their toys, and playing with the dollhouse. Most toys have a double-pronged effect, so keep an eye out for those. For instance, the doctor kid will allow your sim to gain empathy while they work on the creativity skill. To level up motor skill, your child can use the monkey bars on the jungle gym. They can dance, they can use a swing set, or they can swim. They can also use the computer. Now, to maximize your sim's skill game, they should be happy when working on their social skill, focus when working on their mental skill, playful or energized when working on their motor skill, and inspired when working on their creativity skill. Being happy is a baseline and it will always help them when they are skilling. Outside of the base game skills so your child can unlock at the time of writing this, your child is also able to unlock photography, bowling, pipe organ, regular piano, pet training, vampire lore, singing, and violin. They can also learn video gaming. There are probably some I'm missing, so if I am, please let me know in the comments, I would love to know. Now let's talk about your sim's character values. Outside of skills, all young sims have a panel called character values. Children and teens can learn responsibility, manners, empathy, emotional control, and conflict resolution. This is one of the reasons I told you to buy a journal, because from as young as their children, they can work on scribbling on the journal when they are emotional. And as soon as they do, they're going to work on their emotional control and they're going to work on their creativity and it's going to provide them good moodlets. So that's why you need to get the journal first thing when they age up. But specifically, this is really important because character values, unlike other things in the game, change how your sim acts when they are grown up without you interfering at all. That is, your sim will autonomously be able to be polite or know how to deal with intense emotions. When your character grows up to be an adult, they will turn these character values into permanent traits. While you should focus on these when your characters are teens in particular, you should know to start from childhood, ideally even from toddlerhood. While it will be too time consuming to list everything that affects the sim's character values, just know that every little thing your child sim does counts towards who they are going to be as a person when they grow up. Carl, as usual, did a really thorough guide on this, which I will link in the comments. Play around with this, you will be surprised at what can affect your sim's character values. For instance, packing their own lunch sack makes them more responsible and gives them a happy moodlet before they go to school. For now, instead, I'm going to try and list how it affects your sims, rather than how what you do affects their character values. Being rude to their siblings will affect their manners, and unless your sim corrects them by using the parenting skill, their character values will slowly move towards the negative. If your sim grows up with good manners, they will enjoy a 50% bonus when it comes to building relationships with other sims, which is considerable. Sims with bad manners will fail at using certain socials and are generally gross. Sims with high responsibility do better at work, don't get stressed out quite as easily as other sims, and get a huge windfall when you pick the right choice during a chance card option. Irresponsible sims should probably work independently since they get uncomfortable just by going to work. Conflict resolution allows your sims to be good at apologizing, but if it's negative, your sims will be argumentative and will come across as pedantic to other sims. Sims with high emotional control will be able to relieve negative moodless in healthy ways like playing music or doing exercise. 
And their negative moodlets in general just go away way quicker than other sims. Sims with uncontrolled emotion will have a much higher time controlling their moods and it will last for much longer. Sims with high empathy will be compassionate and can help their friends and family deal with the harsher realities of life. Whereas sims who are insensitive can investigate other sims and have a higher chance of failing when they attempt to do social skills. You can have your sims parents go into the parenting teach sim menu in order to help build these character values. Remember that your child needs to be in a good mood in order to be receptive and that how you discipline your child affects your life and your relationship, but I'm going to get into that in a totally different video. So in conclusion, it's a lot but it is doable. When I was testing this, I thought it was impossible. Fortunately, the developers have done a pretty fantastic job at making sure that everything is well integrated and children are really fun to play once you have a goal in mind, especially if you have parenthood and are managing a large household. Remember that clubs can be limited to members of the household and you can set up the ages and skill bonuses that they're going to get by doing that. Now with that in mind, there's a lot of things that your children can do and it's not just waiting for them to turn into adults. So let me know if you found this useful, if this guide helps you, subscribe if you'd like to, and please don't tease me. Bye!